Here's a mistake every polar makes at the beginning. Stepping away from the pole while walking. This doesn't look like a dancer's walk, but more like a casual walking on the street. Instead, keep your feet close to the base of the pole while stepping and lean out with your hips, creating kind of a triangle with your body. To make it look even nicer, rotate your legs out in what's called turnout in ballet and slide and circle with your feet on the floor. Looking down to the floor during walking and during spins. It's not only a bad posture, but it doesn't help your technique either. Instead, raise your gaze, lift your torso and open up your chest. If you don't want to look at the camera or to the audience, no problem. Simply look down and out to the corner of the room without hunching. holding the pole too tightly. It's a common misconception that in order to have a good hand grip, you need to hold more tightly, but that's not true on the static pole. On the static pole, you should allow rotation in your hands. Focus on holding the pole in your palm, and whenever you're leaning out and feeling that position of pressure in your hands, try to loosen up your fingers a bit so that you don't lock yourself in too much. clinging to the pole during spins. This is very common at the beginning when we don't trust our arms yet, but clinging to the pole will actually make your spins less successful and more difficult because you need a position of momentum on the static pole. So work on leaning out, engaging the right back muscles and gaining strength in these positions. It will very soon feel much easier than if you're pulling yourself close to the pole. Rounding your back in a pose set. Not only doesn't look nice, but it also tips your weight too much to the back. If this is you, you probably tend to automatically lean back in your set, or you fall back as soon as you try to release your hands. Instead, have the pose slightly further away from your hips in the set, make a big, nice side tilt, and open up your chest and arch your lower back. Jumping onto the pole comes very intuitively when you're just starting out, but even later students continue doing it, especially in knee hook spins. Instead, lean out, pivot long, and wait for the standing leg to touch the pole, then hook it. If you don't quite get the knee hook on the pole, but instead you hook your shin or your thigh, play with the external rotation of your leg until your knee pit is facing the pole and also play with the distance of the standing foot and your hips related to the pole. Flexing the back foot while climbing. Every pole dancer has been guilty of doing it and some struggle with getting rid of this habit for years. It has become muscle memory. It might feel like this is giving you more leverage at the beginning when you don't have the arm strength to pull yourself up but in the long term, it's providing less grip because you rely on less surface of your leg. Instead, use your entire shin and ankle as one big contact point. Lean out with your body while pushing your ankle and your shin into the pole. It should feel like you're kicking the pole with your leg. This position will help you stick to the pole better without having to flex your foot. I have a tool that's going to be super useful to you. You can get it on thepoledancer.com slash curriculum. The pole curriculum is a complete list with all the moves divided by levels. You can see which moves work best on spinning, on static, on buff. You'll find videos with variations, progressions, combos, and even a tutorial for each move. You can check if there are any gaps in your pole progress, and you can get ideas for your next training or your next pole routine you can always come back to it to check if you're in the right track. Get it on thepoledancer.com slash curriculum.